Hello, my name is Hunter and this is a virtual little library for staying connected, created by Dr. Tasia Gonzalez and myself. Our library is a collection of picture books read aloud by community members that we would like to share with you. These read alouds are a way for us all to stay connected while also supporting our children while they are unable to attend school. The books and community members we've chosen show the diversity of our schools and communities. We would like to thank our readers and their guests for participating, as well as the Midwest and Plains Equity Center for supporting the project. We hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Kelvin. Hi, my name is Blake. Hi, my name is Omar. Today I will be reading to you Crown, an O to the Fresh Cut, written by Derek Barnes and illustrated by Gordon C. James. When it's your turn in the chair, you stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walked through that door. You came in as a lump of clay, a blank canvas, a slab of marble. But when my man is done with you, they want to post you up in the museum. That's my word. He'll drape you down like royalty with that cape to keep the fine hairs off your neck and a princely robe. It's amazing what a tight fade, high, low, bald, it does for your confidence. Dark Caesar. Who knows? You might just smash that geography exam tomorrow and rearrange the entire principal's honor roll. A fresh cut does something to your brain, right? It hooks up your intellectual. You're a star, a brilliant blazing star. Not the kind you'll find on the sidewalk in Hollywood. Nope, they're gonna have to wear shades when they look up and catch your shine. Lean you back in the chair, dab that cool shaving cream on your forehead, then craft a flawless line with that razor. Slow, steady, surgical. It frames your swagger. The cute girl in class across the way won't be able to keep her pretty eyes off of you. Her friends will giggle and whisper, girl, he's so fine. Yeah, that's what they'll say. The whole school will be sick, seasick from the rows and rows of ripples. You'll have more waves on your head than the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out my do-rag and patience. There's a dude to the left of you with a faux hawk, deep part skin fade. He looks presidential. Maybe he's the CEO of the tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. The dude to the right of you looks majestic. There are thousands of black angels waiting to guide and protect him as soon as he steps foot out that door. That's how important he looks. There's a dude standing in the mirror that can't get over the masterful designs crafted on the side of his dome. Everywhere he goes, people will ask him for his autograph. He looks that fresh. He looks like he owns a few acres of land on Saturn. Maybe there's a river named after him on Mars. He looks that important. There are two dudes, one with locks and the other one with cornrows and a lady with butterscotch complexion, and all they want is a shape of tapered sides, a trim, and a crisp but subtle line. And sometimes in life, that's all you ever need, a crisp but subtle line. When your barber is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change. When his fingertips hit you with that apple green alcohol, or that witch hazel, it'll sting, but not like a scorpion or a hornet, more like an electric stamp of approval. And when you see the cut yourself in that handheld mirror, you'll smile a really big smile. That's the you you love the most. That's the you that wins everything. That's the gold medal you. Every person in the shop will rise to their feet and give you a round of applause for being so fly. Well, not really, but they'll look like they want to. You'll see it in their eyes. It's the look your English teacher gives you when she hands you your last test with a bright red 97 slapped on it. It's how your mother looks at you before she calls you beautiful. Flowers are beautiful. 
Sunrises are beautiful. Being viewed in your mother's eyes as someone that matters, now that's beautiful. And you'll take it. You don't mind at all. Finally, he'll remove your cape, then swipe you down with a brush made from a golden horse tail. You'll put the money in his hand without even expecting change back. Tip that man. Tip that man. It was worth it. It always is. You know why? Because you'll leave out that shop every single time feeling the exact same way. Magnificent. Flawless. Like royalty. Hello world. All right, guys, and that's the end of the book. So um, now we're going to talk to you a little bit about the book and why it relates to me personally and um, a little bit about um, why it relates to my partners here. So it relates, the book relates to me personally because, well, I'm a barber, first and foremost. I, I cut people's hair. And um, I do like the feeling it gives other people when I see them, when I finish cutting their hair and I see them smile or you know, react a certain way about the haircut, it just makes me feel good and I know they're confident in the haircut they just got and it gives them a lot of confidence. Blake, how does it make you feel when you get a fresh cut? Man, when I get a cut, it's the best feeling in the world. It makes me feel like a new person. Going to the barber shop or getting cut is almost like an event for me. It just makes you feel a lot more confident than you came in and it's just a good feeling. That's right. How about you, Omar? How do you feel every time you get a fresh cut? I feel confident. I feel like a new man. And I feel like I can do almost anything because of how the fresh cut makes me look. So that's how I relate to the book. Because when I work out that door, it's like, hello, new world. Yes, sir. Um, so I want to just talk to you guys a little bit about why I became a barber. So this is actually a, a funny story. And I believe it was my summer before going into sixth grade. Um, I was down with my aunt in Georgia, living with her for a little bit. And she had took me to the barber shop. She had took me and my little brother to the barber shop, and we just got these fresh cuts. And so, like, I, I remember that, that feeling of looking in the mirror just being super, like, wow. Like, is this really me? Like, I was just, I felt like I really did feel like a whole new person. And so the next time when my hair started to grow a little bit and I wanted to cut cup hair myself I took a, a shaving razor and just shaved my whole head and it looked really bad obviously but that's kind of what sparked like everything that's what kind of sparked the whole you know barbering and things like that so I'm really glad I actually did that and got to get the feel for it and decided that that's what I wanted to do so um so yeah I've been basically cutting my own hair since about the sixth grade and I'm now in college going into my sophomore year. So when was the first time do you guys remember like your first time getting a haircut from a barber shop or what was your first experience like getting a haircut? Uh, well, like, well, growing up, I always got cut by my father. So like, I didn't know anything different than like his haircuts and those were the best haircuts because they were free. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. So I don't really remember my first uh, time going to be cut by him because I was I was cut from him since I was like, you know, since a young age. He's always known how to cut hair. So he cut my my hair since birth. So um, but I remember my first time going in the in the barber shop, And like I didn't even know like what a, how a barber shop worked. <laughs> I didn't even know how a barber shop worked. So I remember sitting down in the person's chair and him asking me what I wanted. And like, it clicked in my mind because I'm like, I never had to tell anybody what I actually wanted. Right. So like, so, I'm, so I uh, actually had to pull up a picture of like how my hair usually looks to show him what I wanted. Cause I didn't know how to like describe it to him. But like, that's just a, like a funny story about me going in the barbershop and not even being able to tell him what I wanted because I never <laughs> got cut before. 
in a barbershop. But yeah. What you, Omar? Like, what was your first experience like going into a barbershop? Again? I remember my first time going to the barbershop. I remember my earliest memory. And the reason I remember was because I used to hate going to the barbershop because I was, uh, was kind of hyper as a kid. So I used to hate sitting in one spot, you know, the whole time. So it was one day my mom was like, go get a haircut. And I was like, no. And she said, do it. And, I, and then she told me, if I don't do it, I'll be grounded for a month. And that was when I just got my first PSP, so yeah, exactly. So I was crying, but I was I I went to the barbershop, yeah, and I got a fresh haircut that day. Yeah, how did that make you feel though? Even though you were a yeah, yeah, exactly. After it, it made me feel good, but before I was yeah, I, after it did make me feel amazing though. Like I'm, I looked at myself in the mirror, I looked you know much better. Yeah, it made me feel good. Shout out to moms for, you know, sometimes forcing our hand, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's for us, right? Exactly. So I, um, I just kind of want to show you guys, I did uh, say a little bit ago, I was a barber. So I just kind of want to run you guys through some of the tools I use to, you know, give people that confidence, that swagger that they walk out the shop with. So one of the main things I use, depending on the texture of someone's hair, which is really important in cutting hair is my clippers here that I use. So I used to give, I use this to give people fades, um, any type of haircut really that they, they would like. This is, this is the main tool I use to, to really make that happen. These are called uh, clippers. And um, for more straight hair, for people with more straight hair, I use um, sometimes, you know, if somebody just wants a little trim, I do have my, my shears here, my thinning shears, and my straight razor, which all help me effectively, you know, give that person that, that desired look that they're, they're going for. So, yeah, those are all, those are all just some things that, you know, help me, help me be a, a good barber, I would, I would say. And uh, Omar and Blake are actually uh, some of my closest friends. And um, I, I do give them haircuts. So, Blake, how did it, how did it make you feel that first time I gave you a haircut, not really knowing, you know, my work and not really knowing me that well? How did that make you feel? And how do you think that interaction was? So when I sat in the chair for the first time, you know, I didn't really have any expectations because, you know, when you go to a new barber, it's, you know, you have to sort of work with the barber, like get familiar with them, tell them what you want. So it was really like a trial and error thing. But like to my surprise, it was it was fresh from the first time I ever got cut by you. And like, I just remember getting up out the seat and looking in the mirror, <laughs> like you actually know you handed me a mirror and like, I'm sure you can remember the look on my face when I, <laughs> <'cause> when, <laughs> and you just have a big smile on your face and you, uh, you thank the barber for, you know, for cutting your hair, but it was just a good experience. And I, yeah, it was just a good experience. <laughs> yeah. And um, one, one of the amazing things I get to experience as a barber is just the connections I do get to make with different people, different faces from all, all backgrounds and walks of life. Like, who would have knew that two of my closest friends would have um, got to meet me through barbering, right? That's the, that's the great thing about barbering. You get to meet new people, get to see different faces, get to hear different stories. Omar, how, how did it feel when you first got a cut from me? What, what was that interaction like? At, well, at first... I hate trying out new things. That's just one thing about me. So like when I first got to school, I hadn't got my hair cut for like, I think it was like a month now, but because I hate trying new things. So uh, I wanted to get my hair cut and my, and my brother recommended you because he had gotten a haircut. But when you first came, I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect it to be good because most barbers I go to on the first try, you know, it's always like, you know, they get it wrong and then we, I tell them what was wrong and then they get it right. But mm -hmm. when I first got it like when i looked in the mirror it was like heaven on earth because yeah exactly <laughs> it was like even way better than i expected probably the best haircut i've gotten and i promised myself on that day is if kevin's around i'm not getting my haircut by another person <laughs> yeah exactly really yeah but it, it made me feel amazing it made me feel different new more confident that's that's amazing thank you for that and that's that's again an amazing thing the the confidence that you can get just just simply by getting your hair trimmed, just getting a hair cut, right? And it's, it's incredible that that experience, like what that experience can do for, really do for you. And if I may add, like your experience is a lot better because you know how to interact with your 
customers, you know, a lot more and make them feel comfortable. Because if I would have been in the chair without, you know, you talking, interacting, I would have been more worried about, you know, what you're doing on my hair. But like, I, I didn't even notice. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even notice you were done until you were done. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think like your experience is the best I've had because, you know, it's, you know, way better, you know, makes me feel, makes me want to get a haircut. Because then I, you know, like my barber is like, as you said, you know, one of my closest friends. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's much better. That's great. Blake, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I wanted to ask something real quick. Like, just going off of what Omar said, like, the experience is just, it's just better in general when you have a connection with the barber and when he's like, you know, you're able to have a conversation. You're not just sitting there silent and um, just letting him cut your hair because if, like, you didn't know him at, him at all or her at all and you were just allowing him to cut your hair, you know, it may be sort of awkward, pretty awkward, but mm -hmm. um, the fact that you're able to have a conversation makes it a little bit more bearable because you're sitting there for such a long time. And yeah, that's just a good thing. Yeah, and I, I believe, um, you know, barbers interacting with people is very, very, very important because you have to earn their trust, right? Because as Omar said, someone might be coming to you uh, the first time and they might not know what to expect. They might, they might be worried. And them being worried, you know, can that energy can also feed off on, on the barber. So knowing how to interact with different clients whether that be a, a older person or a younger person really helps the experience and really helps the, the client want to actually get a haircut every time they want to get a haircut. So um, that's really why I really enjoyed this book because it really talks about that experience that you get, you know, getting a haircut and how it makes you feel more confident, more fresh, majestic, like a better version of yourself. Exactly. So, All right. um, thank you guys so much for, um, joining me in my read aloud and uh what do you how what was your first experience like getting a haircut um write that down um talk about it in class but thank you so much for coming and joining us and until next time thank you appreciate it thank you